Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today I'll explain why the Gold Mask ending is the best ending in Elden Ring. So even though the Tarnished doesn't get to go on a honeymoon with a puppet, the rest of the lands between would be much better off under the Age of Order. That said, there are quite a few mistranslations and misconceptions for the Gold Mask ending, which could explain why it hasn't gotten as much buzz as the others. So to figure out what happens in the Gold Mask ending, let's start with the Mending Rune of Perfect Order. The Mending Rune is a rune of transcendental ideology, which will attempt to perfect the Golden Order. The current imperfection of the Golden Order, or instability of ideology, can be blamed upon the fickleness of the gods no better than men. That is the fly in the ointment. There are a few subtle differences lost in translation. First, there's no mention of ideology in the original Japanese text, a term that carries a lot of baggage. Instead, the kanji used is better translated as viewpoint or perspective, so transcendental ideology should be read as transcendental viewpoint. Thanks to Redditor Sonic Flanick for pointing this out. So by acting as a transcendental viewpoint, the mending rune of perfect order would effectively provide a god's eye view of the world. And you can even make the argument that the rune itself does look like a golden eye. And unlike Fia and Dung Eater, who gestated their mending runes, Gold Mask discovered the Mending Rune of Perfect Order. To me, this distinction emphasizes the truly transcendental nature of what Gold Mask found. It also overcomes what Gold Mask identified as the fatal conceit in the current Golden Order, the fickleness of the gods. It's not hard to see why. Merica tried to destroy the Elden Ring, while Radagon attempted to repair it. And of course, Radagon is Merica. Radagon also waged war against Renala, but repented, then he married Renala, but then left her. During the Age of the Crucible, the Omen and the Misbegotten were valued as almost holy for their horns and other aspects of the Crucible, but now they're denigrated for those very same attributes. Likewise, the Crucible Knights were valiant soldiers for Godfrey, then they were shunned. The Japanese text is even more blunt with this condemnation. The item description can also be translated as the imperfection of the present Golden Order was the fluctuation in perspective. There was no need for gods with hearts like men, the defect in the Order. Now, I've seen some people criticize the Age of Order ending because they think it would take away free will from everyone. But this description should make it clear that Gold Mask is criticizing the gods for being fickle and wants to prevent that. And we see how that happens during the ending cutscene. The Mending Rune of Perfect Order forms what looks like a protective barrier around the Elden Ring embodied inside Merica. So I think this Mending Rune will prevent the Elden Ring from being tampered with by gods like Merica and Radagon. And since this Mending Rune is transcendental, it overcomes the limited perspective of both men and gods, which makes Gold Mask's discovery all the more astounding. There's also a fascinating parallel here between Gold Mask and Rikard. As the Taker's cameo explains, when Rikard turned to heresy, taking by force became the rule. The gods themselves were no different after all. In German, this text is even more biting. That roughly translates as, why not also follow the path of the gods? For Rikard, the fact that the gods could be cruel, violent, and oppressive let him justify his own cruelty, violence, and oppression. But for Gold Mask, the notion that the gods themselves were no different may have caused him to start to reconsider the very fundamentals of the Golden Order. Ironically, by being so devout, Gold Mask would also be seen as a heretic, first by his disciples who abandoned him, and then by Corhin. Fun fact, you don't actually need Corhin to do Gold Mask's quest. And who needs disciples when you can T-pose for days? Even though it's basically a meme, there's actually a lot of symbolics with Gold Mask T-posing. At first, when Gold Mask is in Landell, he only does half of his signature move. More specifically, he's doing the gesture for Outer Order, which you get from Melina at the Minor Erdtree Church. Melina recounts these spoken echoes of Merica. I declare mine intent to search the depths of the Golden Order through understanding of the proper way. Our faith, our grace is increased. Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. Like Merica, Gold Mask is also searching the depths of the Golden Order. Or as Smotown pointed out in one of his characteristically excellent videos, at this time, Gold Mask is missing half of the equation. That is, he doesn't know the true identity of Radagon. What's more, you can get the other half of this T-pose, which is called Inner Order, and you get it from meeting D and Nokron. So by combining Inner Order and Outer Order, we get Golden Order Totality. But Gold Mask isn't the only one who T-poses in the game. The incantation, Litany of Proper Death, depicts an image of order, a figure that has the same T-pose you see at Radagon's churches and his statue in Landell. 
Even more telling, Radagon's crisscross pattern appears when using this incantation, and this incantation is highly effective against those who live in death. To me, the game is heavily implying that Radagon was leading the war against those who live in death. And this was a major reason why Goldmask turned against the current version of the Golden Order. As we learn from the Order Healing Incantation, the noble Goldmask lamented what had become of the Hunters, how easy it is for learning and learnedness to be reduced to the ravings of fanatics. All the good and the great wanted, and their foolishness, was an absolute evil to contend with. Does such a notion exist in the fundamentals of Order? So the fact that Goldmask is lamenting the foolishness and fanaticism of those who persecute people strongly implies that this type of discriminatory action just wouldn't exist in a world of perfect order, a world he achieves with his Mending Rune. And by rejecting the notion of absolute evil, Goldmask echoes the wise words of everyone's favorite tortoise pontiff. Heresy is not native to the world. It is but a contrivance. All things can be conjoined. Notably, this same logic would also apply to the other groups persecuted by America's Golden Order, like the Misbegotten and the Omen, even if Goldmask didn't directly talk about them. Y you know what I mean. Since the Goldmask ending is partly motivated by wanting to end the persecution of those who live in death, to me, Fear's ending feels a bit redundant. That said, the Age of the Duskborn does unequivocally confirm the fickleness of the gods. Those who live in death were persecuted for defiling the Golden Order, but now they are the Golden Order. The same also applies for Dung Eater and his Blessing of Despair ending. Another criticism of the Gold Mask ending, as well as the other three endings that repair the Elden Ring, is that it still allows the Greater Will to be in control. There's a lot of assumptions we have about the Greater Will that aren't actually justified in the text. A lot of the criticisms I've seen levied against the Greater Will would be more accurately directed against those who claim to be carrying out its will, like the Two Fingers or Merica and her Golden Order. There's also a lot of deliberate conflation between Order with a capital O as a metaphysical concept, with the Golden Order as a political empire, and Merica, quite literally, is the embodiment of both. It's kind of like the bumper sticker, I don't have a problem with God, it's the fan club that scares me. After delving deeper into the lore, it's really surprising just how little we know with 100% certainty about the Greater Will. We do know that the Elden Beast was the vassal of the Greater Will while the Mirror Helm wards off the intervention of the Greater Will and its vassal fingers. And according to the Nox armor sets, we learn that long ago, the Nox invoked the ire of the Greater Will and were banished deep underground. But this banishment must have ended at some point since descendants of the Eternal were still able to create Celia. The Greater Will does appear in quite a few item descriptions or conversations. A lot of those mentions are either hearsay or they're from the Finger Readers. The Finger Readers interpret the two fingers, who in turn say they are the envoys of the Greater Will. In other words, we're learning about the Greater Will from third-hand sources. So even if everyone is acting in good faith, something is bound to be lost in translation. Since it takes so long to communicate with the Greater Will, if they are even doing that, the Two Fingers have very little oversight and can do pretty much whatever they want. And we do know that the Fingers have their own assassins in the forms of the Confessors, they run their own churches, and they also selected Rani, Mikola, and Melania as Empyreans to potentially replace Merica. Korin even considers the Two Fingers prayer book is a work of heresy. Its incantations bear no lineage from the Earth Tree. I would also like to point out that no matter the ending, you have to choose some type of higher power to rule over the lands between. For the Age of Stars, Rani essentially becomes a god, since she is an Empyrean after all. And even the Frenzied Flame ending, which might seem to be the most rebellious, since you're, you know, letting chaos take the world, it's still doing the bidding of an outer god. In addition to the merits of each individual ending, you also have to decide which is the least worst option between the Greater Will, Vani, and the outer god of the Frenzied Flame. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, what about Vani's ending? Isn't that a really good ending? And that's a great question, though that's a story for another time. And that time is now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really interested to see what Yens think. So do you agree that the Goldmask ending is the best ending? Or if you think there's uh, something I'm missing, uh, let me know in the comments below.